Hey everyone, following the release of one of my latest videos, how to actually tame a beefalo, I wanted to talk about how to get a beefalo with the ornery tendency. For those of you who are just getting into beefalo taming, when you tame a beefalo depending on certain actions that you take while taming it, your beefalo will develop one of four different tendencies. While the beefalo is in its domestication process, it doesn't matter what tendency it currently has, they all have the same stats. However, once the beefalo is fully tamed, then its stats change based on its tendency. A fully domesticated beefalo with the ornery tendency will have the same movement speed of a normal beefalo, but its attack will greatly increase, going from 34 damage per hit to 50 damage per hit. In order to increase your beefalo's tendency towards ornery, your beefalo has to either inflict damage or take damage. It doesn't matter how much damage your beefalo takes or dishes out, what matters is the number of times it does. For example, getting hit by something big like the level 3 Shadow Rook will increase the ornery tendency just as much as getting hit by a spider. The same thing applies to damage. It doesn't matter what kind of enemy you inflict damage on, one hit on a boss will increase your beefalo's ornery tendency just as much as one hit on a butterfly. With that brief explanation out of the way, here are my 5 best ways to obtain an ornery beefalo. Number 5. Attack random mobs. I wanted to get the most obvious method out of the way first. The way I believe Clay intended you to obtain an ornery beefalo is to just use it in battle a lot. With this method, you pretty much attack mobs that come across your screen as you play the game. Attack butterfly, pigmen, tall birds, koala fence, spiders, bees, whatever. Constantly being in battle inevitably means that you'll be dishing out and receiving hits, and is a decent as well as reliable way to increase your beefalo's ornery tendency. The problem I have with this method though is that it's time consuming as a significant portion of the taming period will be taken up by random fights. That's why it's number 5 on the list. The next method is not only faster, but it also completes one of the significant progression tasks of the game. Number 4. Beat Ancient Guardian. This one is number 4 on the list because you've got to rush the ruins to do it, and the Ancient Guardian has to be alive at the time. To beat the Ancient Guardian, you'll usually get him stuck in between two graves or some kind of path that's large enough for you to get through, but not him. With the Beefalo's 160% movement speed, you're fast enough to run behind the pillars even when they seem to be flush against the corners of the arena. From there, you position yourself so that you are out of his range but can still attack him and just hold down the attack button. He has 10,000 HP and your Beefalo deals 34 damage per hit, which translates to your Beefalo almost non-stop attacking him 300 times. The reason I rank this one above attacking random mobs is because it increases the ornery tendency pretty rapidly since you're attacking non-stop and you're doing this while beating one of the main bosses required to progress through the game, so not really a waste of time. Even if you're not beating a boss though, the next method is in my opinion better because it's much more available and I believe it's faster too. Number 3. Fighting Bees Unlike the Ancient Guardian, you're not going to have to ruins rush in order to find angry bees. There are usually a bunch of them in the world. Killer beehives are better than normal hives, since all the bees will be aggroed onto you if you get within range, and killer beehives regenerate bees faster. What I usually do is fight the bees while tanking their hits. Each bee will only deal 10 damage, so your beefalo can take over 80 hits before its health gets into the red zone. So while you're fighting the bees, you're not only constantly attacking, but at the same time you're being attacked pretty rapidly, which means your beefalo is gaining ornery tendency faster than just holding down the attack button on AG. When you've beaten your first 6 bees, aggro the next hive and repeat. If you only have normal hives, attack one of the bees that come out during the day. If there are no bees out or it's not day, just attack the hive once. You can also just sit there and let the bees attack you. Depending on how many bees you have on you, this can also increase ornery tendency faster than constantly attacking something. The reason I don't do this is that you can do the tank and attack method longer, since your beef isn't just constantly getting attacked by 6 plus bees. You sometimes will get honey from the bees, and it's just less dangerous. If your beef bucks you off while you're surrounded by killer bees, you might die but there's a good chance that if you run away, the bees aggro onto your beefalo. Since you're not mounted and your beefalo already is low on health at that point, there's a good chance it'll die. Anyways, when your beefalo's health drops below 200 points, every character except for West will comment in one way or another that it's about to die. At that point, you run away and let your beefalo recover. Your beefalo naturally regenerates 7 HP every 10 seconds, so in about 2 days you can come back and repeat this. Beefalo also gain 4 times the health from healing food. Eating a blue cap will heal the player 20 HP, but if you feed your beefalo 10 blue caps, that will heal it for 800 HP. Since your beefalo's health will be less than 200 when your screen turns red, feeding it the 10 blue caps will pretty much restore it to full health. Then you can go right back to fighting bees. The next step isn't as fast as fighting bees, but it makes up for this by being not only convenient, but also by far the safest of all methods on the list. Number 2. Attack Slurtles. To find Slurtles, you'll have to go into the caves. 
They spawn from slurtle mounds which are usually found in the muddy biome but can sometimes be found in other biomes. Once you find the mound, attack it to spawn a slurtle. The slurtle has a low movement speed and a relatively low DPS, dealing 25 damage per hit and attacking once every 4 seconds. The thing that makes the slurtle great for ornery taming is that once it's attacked enough, it will turtle up into its shell and won't come out until you stop attacking. While in its shell, it reduces all incoming damage by 95%. That, coupled with its meaty 1200 HP, means that once it goes into its shell, you can constantly attack him over 500 times non-stop without having to worry about him dying or getting attacked back. If you end up killing the Slurtle, you've probably increased your beefalo's tendency enough so that you'll end up with an ornery beefalo. However, if you wanted to continue, just find another mound and repeat or hit the Slurtle mound again in a few minutes. This method is so safe that what I usually do is hold the attack button down, wait for the Slurtle to go into its shell, then open up another window on my computer and watch a YouTube video, get a snack, go on social media, etc. for a couple minutes and then come back. By opening up another program on your computer while you hold the attack button down, the game will continue to run as if you're holding that button. With his low damage, low attack frequency, and low movement speed, if I happen to get bucked off while attacking him, it's not a big deal. Maybe I'll get hit once, but I can easily run away, feed the beef, remount, and repeat. The only actual concern is if you do this with multiple slurtles around, since all these slurtles will aggro onto you if they see you attacking one of their buddies. However, the only time you should see multiple slurtles around is if you're near a bunch of slurtle mounds and an earthquake occurred recently. Other than that, attacking a slurtle mound only brings out a single slurtle at a time, even if there are other mounds around. The last method is not as safe as attacking slurtles. In fact, it's potentially the most dangerous out of all the methods. However, it is by far the fastest way to ensure that you'll get an ornery beefalo. Number 1. Attack the Big Tentacle Like slurtles, big tentacles are also located in the caves. Unlike slurtles, they won't just sit there and let you attack them. Once you attack a big tentacle, it will spawn a bunch of baby tentacles. Attacking him a few times will leave the ground you stand on saturated with the sea of baby tentacles. These baby tentacles are very weak, only having 20 HP and dealing only 5 damage per hit. However, they have a pretty decent attack period of 3. You're probably starting to see why this is the best way to tame an ornery beefalo by now. Hop onto your beefalo, hit the big tentacle a few times, and just sit there and let the tentacles shred away at your beefalo's health, until your character comments, or you see that the bottom of your screen turns red. At this point, your beefalo has less than 200 HP, so run out of there as fast as you can. It'll take about 10 seconds to drain a beefalo at full health to below 200. This means that in just 10 seconds, your beefalo will have taken at least 160 attacks. To put that into perspective, you'd have to attack a slurtle non-stop for over a minute and a half to get that many attacks out. When doing this method, there are two additional things that you should keep in mind. First, whenever your beefalo is hit by an attack, it will lose a tiny amount of obedience. This usually isn't an issue, but since your beefalo is getting hit a ridiculous amount of times, you can just assume that by the time you run out of the tentacles, your beefalo's obedience will be at zero. Therefore, you should keep in mind that the next time you dismount, you won't be able to get back onto it without feeding it 5 times. I would recommend immediately feeding it 10 times to not only bring its obedience back to 100%, but also to stop it from shaking off its saddle. The second thing to keep in mind is that your sanity will most likely take a big hit. Each baby tentacle has a negative sanity aura of minus 40 per minute. Since you'll be swimming in these guys, your sanity will go down very rapidly. The reason this can be concerning is because once you're finished with the big tentacle method, your beefalo's obedience will be at zero, meaning you'll have to feed it to remount, but it'll also be at very low health. So if your sanity drops to zero and a bunch of terror beaks start to spawn, fighting them can be dangerous. Once you finish this method, you can just go away and let your beefalo recover, then come back whenever and do it again. However, if you have 20 blue caps on you, feed 10 to your beefalo, repeat, feed the last 10, and repeat again. If you locate the blue mushroom forest, getting 20 blue mushrooms is very easy. If you do that, you're done. So in less than a minute, your beefalo has taken about 500 attacks and is guaranteed to be an ornery beefalo when it's fully tamed. And that concludes my top 5 ways to get a beefalo with the ornery tendency. Before I end the video, I wanted to add one more to the list as an honorable mention. Another good way to increase your beefalo's ornery tendency is to pick both spiky bushes and cactus. Both deal damage to you when they are picked, spiky bushes dealing 3 and cactus dealing 6. If you've ever played in the public server, you've probably noticed that because of the damage penalty, hardly anyone picks cactus and basically no one ever picks spiky bushes. However, if you ride a beefalo, there's no excuse for not doing so since picking these resources damages the beefalo, not you. 
As noted before, the beefalo has passive health regeneration of 7 HP every 10 seconds. So you can basically pick 52 cactus or 100 spiky bushes per day and the damage will be completely recovered. So while you get resources that you can feed your beefalo like twigs or valuable sanity restoring food like cactus flesh, your beefalo will be gaining ornery points with no net loss to its HP. The reason this didn't make the list though is that it's more of a supplementary way to increase ornery points rather than the primary way you'll be getting an ornery beefalo. And that's the actual conclusion to the video. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more content like this, comment to let me know what you think. Take care everybody and have a great day.